What is going on guys? Welcome back to the new viewers. My name is Slovy and today I have a DIY video for you. Last year when the water level in Lake Ontario was high, I was walking around the edges and stuff and the driftwood built up. So I found a bunch. I haven't done anything with it. I'm not a very crafty person so I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And then I got my grandpa's tackle box so I'm going to pull some lures out of there a little later. And then one of my favorite pictures and try to make a little wall piece featuring my grandpa's lures and one of his one of his pictures. Right now I have a piece of driftwood outside with some polyurethane. I already put a coat on it. I don't know if I'll get to it tonight, depending on how fast the poly dries. But until then, I'm gonna show you what what's gonna go into the project, just in case any of you guys wanna do a project like this. So it's gonna be a pretty simple project. I bought these. They're just little eye hooks. I got this little clip with a little screw on it. I got this idea from something one of my cousins gave to me. I'm going to screw that into the middle and it's going to hold the picture. Then I have a bunch of paracord. So I'm going to tie it to both sides of the driftwood so it kind of hangs from a nail on the wall. A lighter to melt the ends of the paracord. And one of the most important things, let me go grab. You guys see me use this tool a lot. I'm going to use that to cut the fishing line. And then here's, I'm going to use a fishing line to tie the lure to the eye and to the lure. So it's not going to be much. The hardest part is just going to be waiting on the poly to dry. And I'll show you what at the piece of driftwood right now. So we're using Minwax fast drying polyurethane. And then here's the piece of driftwood. So in the center, we're going to put the picture. I think I'm going to do two eyes on, the end, on each end. So we're going to use a total of four lures. I haven't decided if I wanted them to circle down and hang and attach to the other side, or if I just want to hang four kind of tiered. So it's a fairly simple project, something I've been wanting to do. It's starting to cool off here, so I haven't really been able to get out fishing. Got a big weekend coming up next weekend. I'm gonna to try to put together two or three videos while I'm there for you guys. So we're literally only going to do two coats of poly, but I just wanted to give you a tip about it. If you don't already know, we made cornhole boards about a month and a half ago. And I put a coat of poly on and it was real hot out and I put another coat on. It cooled off at nighttime and I put another coat of poly on before I went to bed and left them outside and it fogged up in between them. So if you put your poly on too soon in between coats and it's cool or damp, you will get fog in between your poly. So to fix that, all I did was took a real fine piece of sandpaper, ran over the whole entire thing, and then just applied a new coat of poly on the cornhole boards, and they came out great. Just a tip that I learned along the way very recently. <laughs> so we're gonna get this poly put away, and we're gonna let this dry off for a little bit, and then we'll bring it into the house and start putting some eye hooks in there and seeing if my vision as good as I hope it looks. Guys, crush that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading videos, and comment below you did all that. And as I'm doing the project, comment below, let me know how you think it's gonna come out. Um, I can't wait to see how it comes out. I'm, I've been waiting to do this for a month or so now, so time will tell, guys, time will tell. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna tie the knots on the paracord, and I just do kind of a simple hangman's noose because it cinches nice. So all you got to do Leave the little loop open like that for it to go through I would say go around probably about three times And then tuck it Through that loop I just told you about and pull it nice and tight 
this is where the lighter comes in. We're gonna cut the excess off. Some scissors. use the side of the lighter to flatten it up, flatten it out. So what we're going to do is put the end of the stick in there. And it's going to hold on to the end of the wood. And I'm going to do the same exact thing in the other side and they'll be able to hang the nail in the middle. Probably not a good thing that I call it a hangman's noose, but I don't know what the real name of it is. Maybe it's a cinch knot. Comment below if you know the name of my knot. So that's just getting ready for the piece of driftwood. I'm gonna put the both loops on each end, and then I'm gonna screw one of the eye hooks on the opposite side so it can't slide off the end either. I'm not creative by any means. So if you guys think I did something wrong or should do something different, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm learning as I go. It's just a project I've been wanting to do. It's important to me. I hope you guys come up with some sort of project for yourselves to do. I'm just trying to showcase some family heirlooms here. And for me, family heirlooms are fishing stuff, hunting stuff. I love, I love stuff like that. It's like history for me. All right, guys. We're back. We're going to keep this simple. Cause that's the way I like it. Simple, stupid, easy. So we're gonna take this loop, put it over the top of the wood. And cinch it nice and tight. We're gonna do the same thing with this side. We're gonna cinch it nice and tight. So this is what we're looking at right here. So exactly on the opposite side, we're gonna take one of these eye hooks and to keep that in place, we're gonna screw it on the very bottom. It's gonna serve two purposes. One, the obvious reason, hold the lures in place. Number two, I'm going to slide that paracord right up next to the eye to hold that in place, like so. This is still kind of wet. I jumped the gun, but I want to get this done before the dogs start barking because my dad's going to be home soon. Do the exact same thing on this side. And we're only eyeballing it to line it up, guys. So we got two eyes on there. So in the middle of recording, the camera went off for some reason. So as I was saying, we're gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna put the picture dead in the center. I'm gonna take this little guy. It's a clip, it's got a screw. This one's gonna test my patience, I can see it already. Get that on there nice and tight, and I think, yep, this is as I suspected. Bend it into place. <laughs> We just don't want to bend it so much we break it, you know? So we put the picture on so we can get another one of these hooks started. So this project's kind of cool, guys. We found the driftwood in Henderson Harbor. These lures 
have been used in Henderson Harbor by my grandpa. And the picture I'm putting it on is of my grandpa and my uncle, who my dad took fishing, and they caught salmon in Henderson Harbor. So there's a lot of lot of memories in this DIY project. So we got all the hardware on, the clip, the eyes. So now all we gotta do is get the lures on here. So I collect Wade's figurines and like rock figurines. So I took the Shakespeare lure, that one, and put it in there. Because it was one of my favorites and I wanted to display it. And then another favorite of mine was those two little guys. So let's dig into his tackle box. Right off the bat, I already know I want to put one of these guys in there. The Red Devil. Another lure that was one of my favorites was this one. It's like a little Cleo trout, trout lure with the squid on it. And then this was another lure I liked. I remember, I remember calling the color Crocodile when the actual name of the lure was Crocodile. I have a bunch of these guys in my personal collection. So I think I'm going to put this one on the make this one part of my project. Those right there are just some of my favorites. If I get them together and I don't like the way they look, I'm probably gonna end up trying to switch some out, but as of right now, these are the four I'm gonna go with. Guys, if I can get through this project without hooking myself, then we've done something. <laughs> it's a little tedious, guys. I forgot. I was so caught up in this, I forgot I was recording. Yeah, one lure on there, guys. I might have to do this a couple times because I don't really know how long they should be, to be honest with you. I should have worked from that end this way. I actually didn't want to leave the hooks on these, but you can't take the hook off the this old this old lure. So I figured it would look dumb if I took them off everything except for one lure. These jerks aren't even in the house, and you can hear them barking. And my dad's gonna be coming home like in minutes, so I'm gonna have to pause this and pick it up after their dogs settle down. Well. First we gotta get that lure untangled. I was really kind of trying to surprise my dad with this. But I got started too late in the day. And then I had to take him to get his car. He's a real woodworker around here, so we'll see what he has to say about this. I just realized I'm tying these knots like I'm going out for a giant fish. Might accidentally catch a cat. Or myself. Look at that, guys. It's looking pretty good. Guys, like I said, it's a do-it-yourself project, and if it's a project I can do, then anybody should be able to do it. We got the driftwood from Henderson Harbor. We got my grandpa's lures from his tackle box. And then we got a picture of him with my uncle, who's also passed away, who caught salmon. My dad took him out fishing in Henderson and that's what they caught. This was years and years ago, probably in the late 90s maybe. Lure number one, the red devil, the crocodile spoon. The lighting in here is terrible, guys. And an oldie. I just recorded a whole blurb and wasn't recording at all. 
So guys, like I said, this is a fun do-it-yourself project that pretty much anybody can do if I can do it. I'm not very creative, so it didn't take me very long, probably like 15, 20 minutes once the poly dried. It's pretty cool, a lot of memories wrapped up in this project. Like I said before, the driftwood came from Henderson Harbor, the lures were fished from Henderson Harbor, the picture that's on it, the fish were caught in Henderson Harbor, my dad took my grandpa and uncle out fishing and they got some giant salmon. So a lot of memories wrapped up in it guys. I hope you could get some ideas and maybe make your own do it yourself with driftwood. This was my idea, it's exactly what I saw. I think it came out pretty good. It doesn't match well with the background of the wall in here, but this is in its resting place. I'd like to put it in the living room or something on maybe white, white or blue paint. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. I'm going away this weekend, so I'm hoping to be able to make two or three videos for you guys. And uh, some of these videos might be pretty lit, so we'll see what We'll see what unfolds this coming weekend. Guys, I got a big weekend coming up. I'm going to be with all my family, so stay tuned for them. Thank you for all your support. This has been a blast. And like I said, keep your eye out for these next videos, and thank you so much for all your support. We'll see you next time.